In this video, I will tell you the four ways that you can make $10,000 a month with coding. And I'm not just talking about landing a job at Google or something. All of these four ways actually work for literally anyone, no matter your background, no matter where you live, and they can even work within six months of you starting if you do some things right, which we'll talk about. And I say this from experience because using a combination of these four methods, I have personally made multiple tens of thousands of dollars a month. In this video, I will also give you my recommended step-by-step -step roadmap. It's very simple and that gets you making money fastest, but also maximizes your income throughout your career. So now let's go through these four paths in increasing order of earnings potential, starting with the obvious one, the traditional job at the tech company. Now, how lucrative this path is for you depends on one key variable, your location. So in case you can get a job, aka you have a legal work permit in either USA or Switzerland, this path can get you to 10K a month relatively quickly. But even then there's one big problem about this income, which we'll talk about later. But if not, it can take a very long time. Like I can tell this from experience. My first job as a software engineer was in the UK and my starting salary was 35,000 pound, but I wanted to get a 10K a month. And in the UK, unless I got into one of the fan companies, it would have literally taken me like 10 years to get there. Now the upside with getting a job is that it's fast. It's usually the best way to get started. But the downside is that your earnings are inherently capped. But this is absolutely something that can pay you very, very handsomely. This is some things you really, really need to understand about it, which we'll talk about in this next segment. So as we know, the salaries for tech workers are very high at 158,000 dollars a year in average but to reach these salaries you need to understand the new emerging trends to know what is in demand for example the tech landscape is shifting and traditional tech hubs like the bay area may no longer even offer the best deal so if you want to consistently grow your salary as a software engineer you simply cannot ignore market trends like these and to learn about them in more detail i highly recommend all of you download the 2023 state of tech salaries report by today's sponsor hired the report gives you all the market insight from the tech industry that derived from real interviews and job offers, so they reflect actual hiring demand today. Some of the more interesting insights I personally gained from the report include that, for example, in 2023, the top skills that are most in demand seem to be Python, Java, AWS, SQL, and Go. And importantly, going forward, as expected, people with AI skills in their resume are most competitive when applying for jobs. As a remote developer myself, I was also really interested to find out about trends around remote work. For example, how the number of remote positions has evolved over time. They also have full breakdowns of which are the highest paid locations today for software engineers when adjusting for cost of living. And the results definitely surprised me. So I learned a ton from this report myself and I think it should be required reading for any software engineer. So I will leave a link down below for you to download. Thank you for Hired for sponsoring this video and making this report for us so we can all stay ahead of the curve. Now let's move on. But like I said, even if you get these higher salaries, there's one big problem that you need to be aware of. But before we talk about that, let's talk about the next path because it also relates to that one. And that is freelancing. Now, first of all, when I say freelancing, I'm not talking about going to Upwork or something. What I'm talking about is rather than working for a company as an employee, you can work for a company as what's called an independent contractor. Now, first of all, there's actually a significant downside to this. As a contractor, you do not have the same security as an employee. It's easier for the company to fire you. And also your expectations will be slightly higher because as a freelancer, you're hired to do a specific job. So if freelancing has these downsides, what do you get in return and why do I recommend it over getting a job? Well, it's two big things. First, you get much higher pay. And especially in Europe, which is where I'm from, I'm talking much higher pay. Secondly, it's easier for you to get location independence and work remotely, even from abroad. And the second part is especially important, again, if you're not based in the US, for example, but you would like to access US level compensation. You can do that much more easily with freelancing because there's less legal restriction for the companies to give you that. So as you can see, freelancing is sort of like an upgraded version of being an employee. You get more pay and more freedom, but it is also somewhat harder to get started with. So it could be possible that you get started as an employee, you work there for two years, you get some experience, and then you transition into freelancing. This is often what I recommend to people. Both of these first two paths have a one massive problem with them. And that is that all your income is tied to your time. And if your company decides to fire you, now suddenly all your income is gone. So that is why while these first two parts are the best way to get started earning money, 
I actually recommend every developer to also start developing multiple income sources via paths three and four, which we'll talk about now. So this next path is something you might not have expected, but it's the thing I'm doing right now is content creation. While as a software engineer for a company, you are using your software engineering, your coding skills, to create software and create whatever value you can create as a software developer. But when you are a content creator like myself and you teach others to become programmers from your experience, you are essentially like spawning many developers around the world. So if through your content, your teaching, more than one person becomes a software engineer, you have automatically already created more value than you would have working for a company yourself as a software developer. Now you can make any kind of content in the tech industry. You can make entertainment entertainment content, you can make tutorials, vlogs, and then once you have built an audience, you have an amazing community of people like I do. <laughs> and when you have this community that trust and like you, you can then create products tailored to that audience. You can solve the exact problems that your audience has through your paid services as well. And once you do this, getting to 10k a month is not that hard at all, but it just takes that upfront work of developing the skills of creating quality content as well as your coding skills. But that is also the downside side on top of your coding skills there is an entirely different skill you need to learn which you might not be interested in learning and if not then that is absolutely fine but I think combining coding with content about the coding either as a part-time thing to supplement your income or as a full-time thing is one of the best ways for developers to increase their income massively but there is an even more powerful way for you to leverage the power of the internet to make even more money as a software engineer and this is the part that is by far the hardest one to execute, but it's still something that I recommend every developer starts doing at least at some point. And that is to become an independent software engineer. Okay, so what the hell do I mean by independent software engineer? Now, when most people think about becoming a software engineer or a software developer, they only think about being a software developer for a company. But the people who realize that that is not the case are often the one making the most money and living the best life. Let me explain. Now, why do you think that tech companies pay so much money to their employees? Well, it's because the companies themselves make a lot of money. So it makes sense, they can afford it. But the thing with being an employee or even a freelancer is that the company makes a lot more money from you than what they pay you. And like, there's nothing wrong with this. This is just how business works. But what this means is that the real money is not in putting all of your hard hours and your knowledge into one company, to someone else's company. It is in actually owning the software that you build. And this is a massive superpower that you have access to as a programmer. For example, there's this app called Magnet that some developer guy somewhere has built that, that basically just allows you to tile your windows on your desktop. He built it once and now it has hundreds of thousands of users and that guy is almost passively making like millions of dollars from it. Now, sure, obviously it's probably more complicated than that. There's probably stuff that he's doing for it, like customer service, like, but the point is that you have a lot of work up front, but you get the profit from that until the end of time, basically. And it is why right now, while I could be earning like 10, 15K a month working for a company as a software engineer, I'm deciding to put all of my coding hours into coding our own startup, Boxio, which by the way, is an app that you can use to like manage your tabs, files, and tools via sidebar to switch your projects with one click. Download it down below for free if you're interested. Now, if this app fails and no one uses it, now, Technically, all of this time has been wasted, even though I obviously learned a bunch, so it's not really wasted, but you get the point. But if it does work, then it opens up the possibility for infinite money with an amazing lifestyle as well, because it might not require that much coding hours from me, like a few years down the line, for example. And right now you might feel overwhelmed. You might feel like, oh, how do I know which one to pick? And so here is just the exact simplest step-by-step -step plan for you to not only start making money fast, but also maximize your earnings throughout your career. Now the first step, go get a job. Now I know I can sometimes talk bad about having a job, but in the beginning you should just be focusing on learning. And it's the fastest way for you to start making some money while learning. I would say once you've worked your job for like a year or two, then you can transition into freelancing unless you can get like a really, really well-paying job. And on the side, I would recommend starting to do either content creation or creating your own apps. And then once your income from the self-employed path, which is like the path three and four, 
exceeds or matches your income from either your job or your freelance project, then you can go full time on the self-employment stuff. And now you have so much more freedom to scale your income. That is the way I would do it. But now regardless of what you do, I think every developer should be building their own apps at some point. Even if they don't make you money, you will still win because you will get a portfolio project to help you land a job or a freelance project. Or you get to make content about the experience of building it that a lot of people are going to value. But since you'll be building stuff anyway, it makes sense to do a bit of work to learn the difference between building fun side projects and projects that can actually make you money in the future. So to learn that difference and how to build projects to actually get really rich from your coding skills, I actually made this video right here where I teach you all of this by interviewing my own startup coach. And all you really need is to watch this video, which I highly recommend you also watch next before you do anything.